Okay guys, we're at it again. We're back to our little botch job here of a undercover vehicle. And uh, we're doing the replacement of the uh, antenna system. This guy right here is the original. So that's what that looks like. It's got that little sort of spiral design on the whip there or whatever. And here's the replacement. They look very similar. Spitting image just about, but not quite. So this is the antenna that's going to go onto the vehicle. And as far as the hole, this is the uh, factory drill hole. But uh, it will take a uh, three-quarter inch standard NMO mount uh, hole on there. Pretty much a three-quarter inch hole. Uh, for any other vehicle that doesn't have this already pre-drilled or whatever and it could be round too because all it's going to do is just clamp onto this from the underside and, and uh, tighten it down on this big old lug right here this antenna has the same thing just about but different sort of design this one is more secure actually so it's going to be a tougher a tougher uh, thing to break off so it just slips right on there just like so you just gotta align it to where it's all nice and parallel with the you know top of the car here and tighten it down from the other end on the bottom side and this assembly will be uh, done it's easy peasy really if you got this configuration like this not bad at all okay exciting update here I got it bolted down finally and there it is and that guy is not going nowhere uh, the whip could actually be screwed off just like so so you could actually replace it if it gets damaged or uh, take it off while you're going through you know some some sort of stuff like that and that looks like it belongs it surely does look at that that's pretty sexy right there now as far as the inside uh, looking at it you can't tell something was replaced in there all the supporting infrastructure of that antenna to be able to transmit on two radios on one antenna is blended within the wiring of the vehicle itself so all that e so all that extra stuff is blended in and lost in the static and that's what we want to be we want to be lost in the static <clears throat> where you know you are in technical terms a gray man where you're hiding in plain sight and with all these new cars and stuff and everything uh, it's kind of hard to pick out what belongs there and what doesn't unless you're like an expert on it you worked at the factory line and stuff like that but in this case it it just blends in there. Now the one thing about these uh, disguise antennas is uh, you're taking away the stock antenna and putting in you know the hi the Heidi thing here <clears throat> and you're putting in the uh, covert one there well when you do that you lose your AM FM radio so uh, there was a, a really cool suggestion from one, one of a uh, one of one of the viewers out there that suggested uh, testing out or, or looking into sh panorama sharky shark fin type antennas that look like this but you know different it's kind of like a hybrid or something what kind of what it looks like and uh, I haven't looked into it just briefly they're they're a, they're a British company and uh, that's why we haven't seen them you know being marketed here in the US I'm sure there are a handful out there maybe but it's not popularly known you know I, I haven't known about this I'm just getting into this you know covert shit here it doesn't seem like that company offers a solution to replace the wiring going to the AM FM or satellite radio uh, I have like I said I haven't you know dwelled into their company to see what they have as far as a workaround this particular company that makes this hide uh, covert antenna does have something to where you could interface the 
the uh, AM FM radio with either this or something else, but you will have both worlds, both your, you know, the entertainment of the vehicle itself and your two transceivers or radios or whatever you have in the vehicle that you're using. Operationally, from, from an outsider, you know, you go to the store, you borrow the car, it, you're not going to tell the difference. Uh, you turn on the radio and you're, you know, listening to talk radio or, you know, the local radio stations. Uh, so that was real important to have. And like I said, this company does have it and that's why the price of that particular item was so high at 500 bucks, you know, because they gave you like an active, you know, amplified antenna element to sort of interface with this. Not really interface, but you know, something to that effect. It, it just it just plugs and play. You tell them the the uh, model of the vehicle and all that good stuff, and they give you gear that's close to what you're looking for to where it's a seamless, you know, installation. Okay, guys, she's all done and put together, and she's ready to get rolled out into the field. And. Uh, that's the final product. It doesn't look, look like anything different than the original stock shit, but uh, well, that's what it is. Gotta hide in plain sight. Uh, get into uh, operate within the static. So if we go inside here, there's nothing out of the ordinary. That's where the VHF antenna used to be. I put a little plug in there. Uh, it doesn't look like much of nothing really, more like a curiosity, but it's uh, camouflage pretty good within that crap there. And, and like I said, this back compartment here is going to be filled with gear, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, here on the 800 megahertz side, I didn't have a cover for this, but I'm sure they could get a plastic piece here to cover that up and uh, make it blend okay and everything. And that's about it. Back to its uh, soccer mom configuration here. If we look inside the uh, the cabin here, nothing out of the ordinary. Regular stuff. And right uh, right in the uh, passenger side here, uh, driver passenger side and all that, nothing out of the ordinary. So like I said, that antenna is doing two radios at the same time. A VHF radio and an 800 megahertz radio. And uh, I have no repeaters programmed into the uh, VHF radio because they usually use it as a tactical radio and meaning car to car or person to person not going through a repeater so in radio talk if you hear somebody say go tac tactical or go on the tac channel that's all it means is you're going straight from this car directly to another car. So the terminology is quite different from the YouTube commandos out there, keyboard commandos, tac or tactical, going car to car. And uh, the VHF radio is primarily for that, so they could talk to their other units on the, on the street there without going through a repeater where that traffic could be, you know, broadcast state uh, citywide. So they're keeping their footprint print kind of, uh, you know, small, if you will. But I do have repeaters on the 800 megahertz radio, and there's quite a bit of stuff on that radio. The uh, interoperability channel, the 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 local law enforcement, and quite a bit of others too. So I, I do have a repeater here. This repeater is towards the direction of the garage door back there, and uh, it's I would say 40 miles away, and I have. Yeah, I don't think I have any obstructions going to there from this location here, other than the cinder block walls and the uh, steel roof and garage door there. So I'm transmitting now. And you just heard that kickback. Let's hear that again from inside the cab here. And that sounds like a nice, clear uh, kickback from the repeater. From 800 megahertz, it's hauling quite a bit of ways there to reach the uh, repeater and back. Uh, it's not a conducive test, but it's, you know, it's okay. The uh, watt meter and the spectrum analyzer showed that it was okay. And this thing is within spec now and going back to business. Other than that abortion that it was uh, a week ago or so. So that's the fix. Crap like this happens all the time. So that's just part of it.
this was an opportunity for me to show without giving too much away of what this particular subject is all about and uh, and uh, how it applies to prepping or whatever is you know who knows maybe this is something that you guys could put in your vehicle uh, just to blend in within the static when you're going from point A to point B your bug out location to your home or the other way around or whatever instead of uh, standing out with a big old ham radio you know thing on top there you just got your stock regular antenna there which is interface with your with your uh, mobile that you'll have inside it's all about the swagger of it I guess you know you just, just got to have that certain amount of swagger to blend in or to project whatever you know message you want to convey to the you know the normal knucklehead out in the street in our case we want to just blend in and go home and uh, continue business but uh, in the first video there was a lot of comments made about you know how the tinted windows is a dead giveaway of, of a undercover vehicle a surveillance vehicle and, and I would guess in, in many applications yes that would be true but then again in this day and age at, at least here in the United States and in some states I would imagine uh, tinted windows is no big deal even the dark ones I mean yeah you gotta have some laws on some municipalities out there that you know forbid it to be too dark but I took a look at my uh, Toyota RAV4 and, and in certain light it's just as dark as this thing here and that's that was straight out of the you know dealership uh, stock you know soccer mom configuration except it's got you know all-wheel drive that we wanted extra you know it, it you can't really tell uh, you put some dude or some lady here you know a little bit overweight uh, wearing you know sweats and and a muumu or something or whatever or some dude you know a, a, a regular dad with a button down shirt you know nice clean shaven maybe a baby on board sticker here or something you can't tell but it's funny is the guy who drives this vehicle he looks like uh, Rob Pincus's uh, reincarnation pretty much with the uh, King Leonidas beard and you know the the uh, regular what do you call it uh, tactical douchebag sort of you know persona with with the tats and Leonidas beard and you know the big bulging muscles on an undersized shirt and stuff like that you know he he's pretty much a dead giveaway in this vehicle here so yeah, that, that was kind of funny since then they gave him a pickup truck so he's not driving this vehicle anymore I don't think but uh it, it just depends how you mix and match your accessories I guess to the person but uh, that that was pretty funny but uh, in any event you know somebody that looks like a regular dad or a soccer mom will blend in with the static really good with this vehicle here with this setup and this vehicle as built has more than enough comms capability to you know call in the cavalry from whenever from wherever without making too much of a footprint sort of noise well that ends it for this subject here uh, and uh, I don't think I'm gonna go back to this thing anymore unless there's something interesting going on I will sometime later you know try to do something like this on a cheaper budget you know that's the whole idea is to take something that works out in the street take a look at it observe it give it some time out in the street to prove itself see what sort of you know after action report you could get from the guys out there to let them know you know what what works and what didn't work and you know where to put things and stuff then we'll take that back to the garage and see how we could apply that to our specifications out here for us uh, normal mortals out there alright guys you guys take it easy and uh, see you later